Okay, guys, don't look away. I catch my first wahoo in this episode. Stand by. Fish here. Okay, guys, how you doing? It's gonna be dark in the morning when I take off for this video, so I just wanted to film what's happening here while it's still light out. So I'm so friggin' excited. I uh, finally think I figured out the nomad situation. So I'm getting the wahoo tomorrow morning. It's blowing. It's gonna be two and a half foot seas at the nearest weather station. However, that always means we're out past the edge of the reef. It's three to four foot if it's saying two to three. So it's gonna be a little ugly, but it's as good as it's been for a week since I went fishing last Friday. I'm excited as heck. So I've got crimp set up finally. I got some nomads. I'm gonna be running these three for Wahoo at the edge of the reef. So I got a Rapala, it's gonna be my shallow water. It's gonna be about 20 feet deep. I'm gonna have this guy, uh, which is a 165 nomad. That'll be running somewhere between 20 to 30 feet. And then I've got the big nomad, the 200. That's going to be running 30 plus on the PC Fun Kraken. So same deep drop reel. I'm going to be using, I'm going to be running all three of those tomorrow. Hopefully the weather semi cooperates, but what's well, the worst case scenario? I go out on the water for a day or a morning. <laughs> Not a bad deal. However, the Wahoo have been elusive to me. So I'm excited. I'll next uh, see you guys early in the morning. Boom. excited this morning we got some good weather well it's blowing so I guess I gotta pretend to be a fisherman and uh, say if it's blowing we're going so but weather's nice Not all this fog I was fighting last week we got nice clear lines I can see all the crab and lobster trap pots so I can bust out there up the reef's edge and I've got nomads set up on what I hope is some properly rigged gear and I'm learning this stuff on my own, so we'll figure it out. Uh, the Yucatan knot. That's what I'm. I'm trying to go from my from my braid main line to my uh, mono top shot. Um, and it seems like a really nice knot. So hopefully it'll hold this time. I'm not certain that that's what had the problem last time. I think my line was just too light with the planers. But now I've got nomads diving some different stuff. Got the weather got the moon it's nearly a full moon so we're gonna get out there before the sun is completely up troll out there and see if we can't find some wahoo come along with us Back it down to 25. 
Okay, it is nasty out here guys, so we're going to get the first one in the deal all the way out here, so we're going to make this happen. Run all the way out to the edge of the reef to be a quitter. Okay. Put my uh, tether on there so I don't lose my rod. Got the battery on, set at zero. Let's get pointed in the right direction. Okay. Classic. So for the Paul Harvey with that train rack, the one my primary issue was I was focused on untangling my lure. I didn't notice the five or six foot that would hit me right on the side. Which wasn't too bad if I had been prepared for it, but since I was focused on my lure, I didn't stabilize myself for that. That was a friggin' ordeal. Just getting one dog on line out. Holy friggin' cow. Bam. I'm an idiot. Oh, we got a big one coming. I tell you, if I actually get a frickin' wahoo, I would have earned it. Okay, that looks like you're still with us. So, here's the situation. I've got, I've got this one here in the Kingfish Rod Holder with the medium dive with the 180 Nomad out that side. Got this one with the deep diver. So we're any we're covering the water column anywhere between 20 to 40 feet deep. Look at that guy. The kind of stuff you just see out trolling. And he's diving down. Big old guy. Much, much, much later. Alright, we're gonna handline this guy. So by the time I figured out how to fix my reel, the fish had run to the boat and it was all slack. And I wasn't sure if the fish was still on yet. And we still have my lure. Boy, I had a... Oh! Got a good fish here. It's a wahoo, boys! Get it out of the motors. Oh, and it's in the motors. Okay. Okay, it's a little one. Woo! Wahoo on the boat! Oh, man. Oh, no. Nobody can see any of that. Okay, first I gotta mark this freaking spot. Oh man. Okay, now we got this freaking treble hook to deal. Oh, there it goes into my upholster. Okay. Wahoo! Okay guys, I'm going to make this quick, GoPro's going to die, but I want you to see how rough it is when you see this footage here. I'm bagging it. I went back and tried to get a second one through that group where I found that Wahoo. No dice. But let's show you. Make sure there's a good tally. Oh, sheesh. Tally of the fish here. Oh, look how beautiful he is. All those stripes and colors on him. Really sharp teeth. Got him bled in the cooler. Wait, I'll be on the two things that I like about camera. And get out of your little tube with your food delivery in your. It's always cool on your way back.
back in and start getting into shallower water and you get the turquoise and blue water to the feet and then 22 feet of water about back in. It's still rough out, but everything's all churned up, which is why you can't see the bottom right now. But uh, you get the turquoise blue water. Love it. That would have been a freaking good one. You gotta keep the camera on. All right, here we go. We have fish out of the cooler. This is the next day, by the way. So to keep. Oh, the skin's skin's really soft. Oh, gee. Really soft. Yeah, out of all the fish, I mean, I just sharpened this knife, but all oh, it's got his cool, this cool little mohawk here. And it comes up. There we go. There we go. Not much of a rib cage on that guy. There we go, right down the back. Really soft meat, really easy to fillet. Yeah, so we got quite a bit of the belly meat on that fillet there. Okay, now over here, let's see what he's been eating. Little stomach, just cut the end off, squeeze it out. Not much. It's a Oh, that's still alive. Snails. What in the motherless heck is that? In the Wahoo stomach that's been on ice overnight, been dead for 24 hours. Wow, if you know what those are, let us know in the comments. That is something else. All right, it's pretty dang good. I wonder if I just go like that. I'll just kind of be it right out. Okay, all the way through that, isn't it? Yeah, maybe not. Yes, well, I did pretty much. And on to the kitchen. Alright guys, it's the next day or is it just two days later? I guess from when I caught the Wahoo. <laughs> it's been clean sitting in the fridge, dried in paper towels. So we're gonna try three different ways to cook this. For one, I'm gonna slice it up raw with some sashimi. I've got some kind of homemade soy sauce. We didn't have soy, but I used teriyaki and Worcestershire and some lime juice. Oh, and lime. We're, we're gonna try that. Lime. We're branching out. I'm gonna fry it um, with just light searing the outside edge and then just warming the inside. That's the way that I've eaten it before never cooked it that way that's where i'm eating so i'm going to do that then Haley's going to air fry it yes so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna egg wash it and then i'm gonna sprinkle it with the fish feisty fish rub some garlic and onion powder and put it in the air fryer which is what you do not do to wahoo but <laughs> i think it's gonna be good we're gonna try, gonna try it and, it. See. and we have the infant taste bud children 
I would probably rather eat a McDonald's. So we're gonna serve it to. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be our taste testers. Well, one of them. See, we have one child that won't eat fish. Maybe we can get her to try. I should be able to air fry, regular frying, sashimi. We'll try that out. So, Stay tuned. See what happens. Okay, so I've got this prime piece of wahoo I'm going to cut into sashimi strips as thinly as I can here. Yeah, oh, this is so tender. Okay, it's pretty thin. Well, you can see the fibers of the meat in there. You can see that there. It's good looking stuff. That, so I got that cut up. I'm obviously going to eat some. Let's see how it goes. Some good looking wahoo there. Soy sauce because I don't have any. Just put it in there. Okay. So that is our Wahoo sashimi. Now we're gonna take a piece here. Take this nice small one, dip it in our semi soy sauce. Mmm. Yeah. Okay, you gotta come try this. I Right there. That is good. Just take a bite. Hang on. Yeah, not bad. Thumbs up. That's good stuff. I tell why I don't want to eat it. Wait. Okay, here's Reagan's reaction to the sashimi. Let's raw wall dip it in the sauce there. Yeah, both sides. Get them out in there. It's good stuff. So that's the McDonald's kit. See how what do you think? Mm-hmm. That's good, isn't it? Nice and tender, has a good texture to it. Yeah. Good flavor. Mm hmm. I like it. Yum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got our pan of butter here all ready to go. I got my three pieces of Wahoo. All I'm doing, I'm just gonna lightly salt these with some Himalayan pink salt here. We'll do the one side first, then we'll flip it over and do the other side with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. I don't want to mess with the flavor of the fish too much. Flip them over so I can put them in there. Pepper. salt a little bit of pepper here we go we're gonna try to sear in the outside to so it holds the flavor in just warm the inside that's all we're trying to do it's turning white pretty quick that one's probably ready to flip and yeah see look at that I mean that took it's already starting to get white in the center of that piece Come on. There we go. Center of the fish there. You see how it's still pink in the middle? That's pretty much it. I'm just going to turn it off and work on taking this off here. Pretty much it. That is our fried wahoo. 
good looking stuff. I mean, that was probably a total of two to three minutes right there. good for you lady okay I'm gonna try the Wahoo here <laughs> let's see what we got here I'm gonna try this smaller one first it's a little more well done and it is cooked all the way through No need to do much flavor than that. A little bit of hint in the butter and salt and pepper. No need for anything more than that. Enjoy that. If you prefer your food cooked. That's fish leather. Uh -oh. Let's go try it. Sheesh. All right, let's see the fish leather. Fish jerky here. You can't even pick it up. It's falling apart, so tender. It's good. I mean, if I were looking for dry... It's not dry? Look at that! Way overdone. Super dry. Well, I could have maybe done it a minute well, less. it's good. I mean, as if we were talking, you know, grouper or... I like it because it has a crispy outside and a soft, flaky inside. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got Reagan here for the final sample. We'll get her reaction. So this is the fried Wahoo cooked the right way. Okay. Do I dip anything? Nope. Just like that. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's really good. Yep. Now the pulverized Wahoo. Mmm. <laughs> this one's like garlicky and this one's like salty, but like good salty. I don't know. Yeah, that's like... just a little salt, little pepper, and butter. That's it. It's really good. <laughs> Isn't that really good? Uh-huh. That's Wahoo right there. It's really good. <laughs> awesome. this one. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Alright, we're going to eat the rest of the dinner. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And please watch all the way to the end. Well, obviously, if you're watching this, you watch it all the way to the end. So, anyhow, we'll see you on the next one.